Hello, my name is Martina, also known as Marilla Cosplay, and today I'm going to show you how I made my circa 1760s coat for my historically accurate Captain Amelia cosplay. As always, is historical accuracy sort of a loose term? Even though this pattern was based upon an extant garment from that time period, it's still my interpretation of a 1760 pattern. I've still opted out of using silk for practical reasons, therefore the lining isn't necessarily wrong, but not the norm for the time period. This also affects the satin ribbons, as I couldn't find a natural fabric that had the same look without being silk. So I have been drafting my patterns for my coat, for my historical accurate Captain Amelia. And for the front and the back piece, that has been fairly straightforward. Um, as you can see, uh, I've used the Cut of Men's Clothing by Nora Watt as my baseline for this as well. And you can see that the waistcoat and the coat do have not the same shape, uh, but a fairly similar one. So for these pieces, like the front and the back piece, I've used my waistcoat pieces as the starting point and then I added a lot of length uh, to both as well as like uh, pleating fabric on the side seam for both and pleating fabric for the back seam as well. And I also changed the shape of it as well, like added, straightened it a bit at the bottom um, and curved it more at the top uh, so it will get a nicer shape. And I also raised um, the arm openings on both the back and the front a lot uh, so that they will be closer to the armpit which were normal back in the day, since when I started drafting my sleeve I noticed that the sleeves were a lot slimmer uh, than uh, the arm openings I actually constructed for the waistcoat. So that will be fine for the waistcoat since it doesn't have any sleeves, but I had to change it a lot to make uh, the coat feel right. So I've, other than actually scaling the sleeve pattern up, I had to actually widen it a lot, since apparently the pattern that this this was make, made from an extant garment, um, and apparently this was a really tiny dude, since the sleeves were so narrow that, like calculated it and I couldn't even put them above my own elbow so everything on the sleeves are scaled up a bit they're a bit longer but mostly just wider all the way so we'll see how these will look on the mock-up and hopefully they will fit great I'm marking the pattern onto my mock-up slash lining fabric with a soft pencil. I'm then adding a 1cm seam allowance. Cut out all your fabric pieces. I'm using an overlock to keep the edges from fraying. This is absolutely not historically accurate, but this will be hidden. This will be the first and last time I'm telling you this in this video, but always iron all of your pieces and press on your seams. Pin your fabric pieces together. And sew it together. The 
So here's the finished look of the mock-up slash lining since I'm gonna use this as lining the same way I did with the waistcoat and I didn't have to do that many adjustments uh, as the fit like I suspected that the fit would be okay but I made it way too long <laughs> so other than changing the length of the main coat I actually didn't do anything else I think um, no no I didn't do anything else because I'm, I'm fairly placed with the shape otherwise uh, but for the sleeves I actually did have to change a bit because I tried it on first without this shirt and then it fit and then I tried with the shirt underneath and like look at my shirt sleeves they are super poofy so I couldn't actually fit it over my shirt uh, so then I added a lot of like width to it and then it get a bit roomy around um, the elbow so I had to fix that and also my sleeves were way too long they're still a bit too long but there's also seam allowance here since this is gonna be lining. First and foremost we have to transfer the changes we did to the mock-up to the pattern pieces before we mark and cut out and overlock the pattern pieces the same way we did with the mock-up. The only difference this time is that I've added the cuff to the piece for the sleeve and I've also made the lining for the cuff a separate piece and cut and overlock that as well. Mark the placement for the decorative trim in the front. Make sure it's mirrored for both pieces. Then I take my 5mm wide trim and pin that down in the marked spots. I'm using whip stitch to secure the trim in place. I'm doing this all the way around and also in the middle where the two trims meet. Next up is the edge trimming. For the edge trimming it's super important that we're super particular in the order we're doing this. So I'm starting with the bottom and top edge for all of the pieces and then I'm doing the sides so that the sides will be the overlapping piece for the trimming. The thing I'm doing, I marked one and a half centimeters inside of my seam allowance, so around two and a half centimeters away from the edge. I marked with chalk and then I'm pinning down my trim in this position. I'm fastening the trim using a whip stitch and basting it down on the outer edge. Add decorative trim on the pocket flaps and the cuffs as well. Pin together the pocket flap and the lining for the pocket flap, right sides facing each other. I'm using the visible stitches on the back of the piece as my guide for sewing the pieces together and I'm sewing only the sides and the bottom edge of the pocket flap. Cut away the corners on the seam allowance and clip into the curved edges. Turn the pocket flap inside out and turn in the seam allowance and pin in place. Secure with a whip stitch.
mark the opening for the welt pocket on the pocket lining. Align the markings you made on the pocket lining with the markings on the front piece of the jacket. Make sure the pins are far away from the lines so they won't be in the way of the sewing machine foot. Sew along the top and bottom line. Cut through both layers of fabric in the middle between the two lines. At the edges, cut towards the corners in a triangular shape. Turn the pocket lining through the opening and press flat. To properly secure the pocket in place, I'm sewing along the sides and bottom line while the pocket is folded open. Then I'm folding the pocket in the position it's gonna be and sew along the top line as well. Pin together the edges of the pocket lining. And sew that with your sewing machine. Pin your pocket flap in the right position. Secure it in place using a whip stitch. Pin and sew together your coat fabric all the way down to the pleating fabric for the jacket skirts. Pin and sew together the front seam on the sleeves. Pin and sew on the cuff piece. And then pin and sew the back seam. And now for inserting the sleeves. Pin them in place and sew. And now for the lining. Pin the lining to the main piece of fabric right side facing each other. Sew it together with your sewing machine. Make sure you leave an opening so you can turn the coat inside out through. Cut away the corners on the seam allowance and clip into the curved edges before you turn the coat inside out. Fold in the seam allowance on the places you haven't sewn yet and pin in place. Secure with a whip stitch. So I pressed all the edges, but I noticed that it doesn't really stay that way, and I think that has to do with 
like the excess layers in all of the edges due to the trim. So the thing I'm gonna do is I've pi started pinning all of the edges down and I'm gonna do a sort of fastening stitch along the gold line which is gonna ca catch the lining without be it being too visible. So that will fix that issue. I'm using a running stitch to secure the edges. Fold the pleating fabric for the jacket skirts so that the edges of the fabric is in the opening of the sides and in the back. I secure it in place using a whip stitch catching only the lining. I have turned up the cuffs into the right position and then I'm folding in the seam allowance and pinning it together. I then secure it with a whip stitch. So for the buttons on this coat I've decided to make them all myself from scratch. So I already made three buttons a while ago just as a prototype when I initially thought I would just make the standard Captain Amelia. Um, so this is a silicone mold I made for the belt decorations for Brienne of Tarte from Game of Thrones. And I decided I wanted to make the buttons from the same mold, um, as these are fairly fancy. And of course I wanted the buttons to be fancy. And fancy buttons are quite expensive, so why not make them myself? First I'm gonna make some oblong metal loops, which are gonna be the small loops on the back side of the button. Pro tip. Get better pliers than I have because these are jewelry pliers and it's not easy for them to cut through this quite solid wire. I'm using polymer clay as the material for the buttons, so I just take a piece and properly push it down into the mold so that all the details of the mold will remain on the button. Then I take one of my metal loops and push it into the polymer clay so only a small bit of it is sticking out. I'm then using some modeling tools and properly push the polymer clay around the opening so it's properly stuck in there. I then pop the button out of the mold. I'm then applying mica pigment to the entire button and then it's going to be cured in the oven. When the buttons have cooled down, sew them on to the coat. Take a 2 cm wide strip of fabric and fold it to the center. Press it and fold it again and press it again. Then I use a whip stitch and properly secure the edges. These are going to be the loops for the buttons on the pockets. Each loop is made from an approximately 7.5 cm long piece of fabric. Sew the loops in place on the pocket flaps and then your coat is done. I hope you found this video useful, please leave a like and subscribe for more sewing and cosplay adventures in the future.